In the last video we looked at the sine rule. In this video we're going to look at the cosine rule. I'm going to start off by drawing a triangle. I'm going to label up now this angle right here. This angle is going to be A. The opposite side, as with the sine rule, is A. This side is going to be B. And this side is going to be C. So we're going to look at the cosine rule to find missing lengths and angles in non-right angle triangles. We discussed in the first video that the cosine rule would be used if we had an enclosed angle. So, for example, this angle here is enclosed between the sides B and C. We can say that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. This is the cosine rule. This is what's given in the formula book. This is easiest if we're finding a length. You can rearrange this to write this now as cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC if you want to find an angle. You can, of course, rearrange this to do exactly the same, but if you remember the second formula, it can be slightly easier to find a missing angle. So, let's have a look at this in action. We're going to start off by finding a missing length, and then we will look at a missing angle. So I'll get two different triangles up here, and as before, we can see that these can have any configuration. So. On this one, I'm going to put now that this is going to be for the length and this is going to be for the angle. So exactly the same format we did with the sine rule. I'm going to say that this angle right here is going to be 38 degrees. I'm going to say that this side length right here is going to be 7 centimetres and this side length right here is going to be 10.6 centimetres. I'm going to look at finding the length here, x. It's opposite the angle that is enclosed now by these two sides. So if you want to think about the formula now as a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, and you want to label these up, well, what we can have now is that this is going to be now the angle a, this will be the side length a, this will be B and this will be C. B and C are interchangeable. So just writing again the cosine rule, which is given in the formula book, we can say that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So let's put this in. We can say now that X squared, so that's A squared, is equal to 7 squared plus 10.6 squared, that's c squared, minus 2 multiplied by b, which is 7, multiplied by c, which is the 10.6, multiplied now by the cosine of 38 degrees. As we saw with the sine rule, we can, of course, use radians as well as degrees. So in a calculator, I'm going to now simply put that x taking the square root. I've got x squared here. That's going to be now 7 squared, which is 49, plus the 10.6 squared, minus now 2 times by the 7, times by the 10.6, times now by the cosine of the angle, so cosine of 38 degrees, and then this will give us the length x as I've taken the square root, 6.66. So x is equal to 6.66, and that's given to three significant figures. So x is 6.66 centimetres, and we've gone ahead and found that. Remember, these diagrams are not always accurate, as I've just made the numbers up. So that is using now the cosine rule to find a missing length. That is my enclosed angle, and it's enclosed by these two sides. Big A, little a, B and C. On, of course, we can swap these around. So let's go ahead and look at using the cosine rule to find a missing angle. I'm going to call this angle here theta. 
we've been looking at x. I'm going to change it up. We might have x. We might have theta. So let's say that this is going to be 6 millimetres. This is going to be now 8.1 millimetres. And this is going to be now 9.8 millimetres. With this one, all we need to do is go ahead and label this up. Again, you don't have to. It might make your life slightly easier. That's big A. There's little A. This is going to be B. And this is going to be C. If I want, I can use either this one or I can rearrange this one right here. I'm going to use the second one. So just writing this out. So what we're going to have is the following. We can say cos A is going to be equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So cos A is going to be equal to, well, B squared. We've got B squared is going to be 6 squared. So 6 squared plus C squared, which is the 9.8 squared. Minus now this 8.1 squared. So minus 8.1 squared. And this is all going to be over now 2 times by B, which is going to be 6, multiplied by C, which is going to be 9.8. Now at this stage, I could find an expression for cos A, which would give me a fraction. Or I can simply now, as we seen in, saw in the last video, take the inverse cosine. Shift cos of 6 squared, or 36 if you want, plus now the 9.8 squared, so 9.8 squared, minus now the 8.1 squared, so minus 8.1 squared, let's put that on, and then that's going to be over 2 times by 6 times by the 9.8, and this will give us now the actual size of the angle. As stated, if you don't take the inverse here, you'll get an expression for cos A. 55.6. So A is going to be 55.6 degrees, and that's three significant figures. Or in this case, we've got theta, um, and we can set that in. So entirely up to you if you want to call that A or theta. I've simply used A because this is what we become accustomed to. So that's what we have. Again, not massively accurate in terms of my diagram, but theta, that angle, is 55.6 degrees, correct to three significant figures. So that's the cosine rule. If we're using it for missing lengths, it's when we have an enclosed angle. If we're using it for missing angles, it's when we have three sides. We discussed that in the first video. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some questions. In question three, we're asked to use a cosine rule to find the value of x in each of the triangles below. So if we look here, we'll do this one first. This one, we have now a missing length. So if you want, you can just sketch this up in terms of the a, b, and c. So if you want to call that one a, that one a, this one b, and this one c, we have the enclosed angle. So using the cosine rule, we've got now that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So we can say now that x, and I'm just going to write x, is going to be equal to the square root of b squared, which is going to be 3 squared, plus c squared, which is the 5.5 squared, minus 2 multiplied by b, which is 3, multiplied by c, which is 5.5, multiplied by the cosine of 40 degrees. So straight for a calculator with this. So square root of 9, that's 3 squared, plus now 5.5 squared, so 5.5 squared, uh, minus now 2 times by 3, times by the 5.5, times by the cosine of 40 degrees, and this will give us that length. 3.74. So x is going to be equal to 3.74. So 3.74, and that's going to be now to three significant figures. So we're not given centimetres or unit on that, it's just that. Now you might look at that and say, well, that's not an accurate diagram. Remember, these are not necessarily drawn accurately. Okay, let's look at, uh, we'll go for uh, this one just here, and then we'll do the angle one. So this one, let's just put these on. Let's go ahead. Uh, we'll call this one now. That's going to be A. That will be A. 
that will be B and that will be C, enclosed angle of 101 degrees. So we can say on here now the following. X is going to be equal to the square root, so A squared, which is X squared, well that's going to be B squared, which is 9 squared, plus now the 7 squared, minus 2 lots of 9, times by 7, times by the cosine of 101 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 9 squared, plus the 7 squared, minus now 2 times by 9, times by the 7, times by the cosine of 101 degrees. Lots of different ways you can type this in the calculator. And that gives us now 12.4. So x is equal to 12.4 units, and that is correct to three significant figures. The level of work you do is entirely up to the teacher or the exam board. I'm perfectly happy with this instead of writing x squared is equal to, but if you're expected to do it line by line, please do that. Okay, let's look at the last one. So this one here, we're finding an angle. So with this one, we can write that cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So let's go ahead and look at these. Then we will call this one now on here. This is going to be the, the, um, uh, the angle A. So that's going to be A. That's going to be little a. We'll call that one B and that one C. Really doesn't matter which B and C are in this case, as long as they're now um, enclosing this angle A. So let's go ahead and do this. We can say now that cos A, so cos A will be equal to B squared, which is the 5.4 squared, plus now the C squared, well that's going to be the 4.5 squared, minus the 3.9 on here, so we've got 3.9 squared, so 3.9 squared, and that's all over now, 2, and then we've got the B, which is a 5.4, multiplied by the C, which is the 4.5. I could get an expression for cos A, I'm simply going to take the inverse cosine. Again, find out what your teacher or your exam board expect. Cos to the negative one, the inverse cosine of 5.4 squared. So 5.4 squared plus now the 4.5 squared minus the 3.9 squared. And that's all over 2 times by 5.4 times by 4.5. And that now will give us the angle. And that angle is 45.27. So let's write that down. Uh, A is going to be equal to 45. What are we going for? 45.3. So 45.3 degrees, and that is now to three significant figures. So I've simply used that, plugged it in, and gone from there. If you're not comfortable with this, let's just go back to the A squared. It's equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. What you can do here is rearrange. So we've got the 3.9 squared is equal to the 5.4 squared plus the 4.5 squared minus now two lots of 5.4 multiplied now by the 4.5 multiplied by cos of, and if you want you can put A or X, I'm just going to put X in this case as now we've got this here, really I should put x as my answer just, just here. So you can see with this, what we're going to do is add this quantity to both sides. So we'll have 2, 5.4, 4.5, cos x. Then I'm going to subtract this from both sides, which is the 5.4 squared plus the 4.5 squared minus the 3.9 squared. Then I'm going to divide by this, con or the content of this bracket just here, and say that cos x is equal to 5.4 squared plus 4.5 squared minus 3.9 squared, all over now 2 times by the 5.4 multiplied by the 4.5, and we are exactly as we were up here. I've just used the formula that's given in the formula book. 
So there we go, cosine rule, nice and straightforward, relatively straightforward examples. And then in later videos, we will look at combining the two. Please be aware that your teacher might expect you to show full workings each time. So be clear in doing that.